Hey, thanks, Dad. I'm Linda. Yeah, and I know I know that I'm older. I get it. And there's, you know, a reality out there that older people must have hate towards certain groups of people. And so for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to do the unimaginable as an older person. I'm going to go 10 minutes without sounding racist and I've been aging oh hell I have been killing it with aging I went and got a copyright for hashtag killing it with with aging it's a life hack and a superpower too I know I'm a late bloomer whatever it's fine I'm a late bloomer it's just in the last year that I got the blonde hair the great body, you know, and the tight butt and good teeth. It's just in the last year. So I'm not really cool with all the compliments. I went so many years without anyone noticing me. You know, all of a sudden I'm getting compliments for how I look. Weird, just weird. Somebody told me last month that I'm aging backwards. Oh hell, if you only knew all the things I do backwards, you know, and I don't even have listexia. Aging backwards. Somebody said, uh, you look like Marilyn Monroe. Really? That's what you got for me? I look like Marilyn Monroe? Come close. Closer. Forget about social distancing. See? Fine lines and wrinkles. Now, I look more like, a, you know, from a distance, Marilyn Monroe who had a really rough life, a rougher life than Marilyn. You know, like I'm the Marilyn that fucked 10 Ken Kennedy. That's what it is. But I did, I'm winning because I just turned 21 for the third time. And I go to that store to get sexy, cute, little flirty clothes, Forever 21. They had the nerve to tell me that I can't go in there they say that I'm too mature. I said, listen, here's a wad of hundreds. Ring up the prom gowns and the hooker heels that I so badly need for attention. Come up with the total, multiply it by three, forever 21, multiply it by three, add six years, I got you covered. It's fun watching those young people at the cash register trying to do that. They have no idea how to do that on a cash register. Yeah. I do have a mantra at my age. It's important to have a way to relax and focus. I have a mantra. My mantra is, don't fucking ignore me. God damn it. I hate being ignored. That's why the prom gowns and hooker heels all over Vegas. Yeah. You don't get ignored when you're wearing a prom gown, you guys. Remember that later on, young ladies. Yeah, I don't know. Lately, my self-esteem has been in the crapper. So bad. Oh, my God. You know, and I was so upset about it because I thought I, my self-esteem was in the tank because I'm getting older and no one's noticing me. Then it dawned on me. It's not me. It's you. Oh, wait. It's the Me Too movement. Yeah. How am I supposed to know a man is interested in me if he can't honk? I don't even know if they're horny anymore. They can't honk, cat call, wolf whistle. You know, that's the beauty of wearing prom gowns. Everybody notices you all of a sudden. Yeah, I love getting attention when I'm out on the strip and I'm walking and young guys see me from behind and they think I'm 18 pun intended from behind. And they come around and catch me from here with the fine lines and wrinkles and they're like, oh, dang, joke's on you. And it's not Halloween every day, but it's cool with me. I don't mind, you know, that they get confused. I get confused and it's fun to confuse others. You know, I don't care if when I'm out walking on the strip with hooker heels and prom gowns, if the whole city of Vegas thinks I'm figuratively or literally a stripper, what do I care what they think? At this age, do I care? I don't think I do. You know, 
it doesn't matter to me. I don't even care if they think I'm walking away from a nursing home. What do I care? I'm having fun. I'm getting noticed. That's the main thing. I got goals. A girl has to have goals. I think even Marilyn would agree to that. Yeah. But come, ha, trying to keep a tight tuchus comes at a hefty price. You have to go to the gym all the time so you can continue to be noticed. When I go to the gym, I don't really do squat. Not even one. You know, for a few different reasons, you know. It's boring. You know, I can do the exercises at home. I go to the gym to get noticed. And besides, the mirrors, I, I was raised in the 50s. And in the 60s, when I had my coming of age, mirrors were on the ceiling. And you had to do blow on a rock star's stomach. Yeah. But now you go to the gym, mirrors are on the wall everywhere. Do you guys know that if I did today at the gym what I did in the 60s in front of those mirrors, I'd be delivering this comedy set from a jail cell. That's what I'd be doing, you know? <clears throat> I did notice a guy walking by and I caught the mirror reflection. I was like, oh, another benefit of the mirrors. He was noticing me from behind, pun intended. And he swung around and came back to talk to me. And we went talking and walking for about five hours. And I gotta say, that's like the longest relationship I've had. You know, and then evidently he got within social distance got spooked with fine lines and wrinkles and I don't know I think he might have ghosted me don't really know but he was an NFL running back and I bet you he decided he'd rather go run back for some more concussions than deal with waking up to this whatever I'm winning because I'm still standing and it don't bother me you know so the uh I want to fast forward to a whole different area of my life in a whole different time. You know, back before the Me Too movement. And by the way, I love the Me Too movement. OMG, you guys, thank you so much for what you've done for us. A little late for me, but I'm glad you did it. On the 70s, I went to the post office. I'm a boomer. I like attention from men. There was a poster. And it said that somebody wanted me. I wasn't wanted. I wasn't wanted. Somebody wanted me. It was Uncle Sam. How could I resist? We weren't taught to say no. So I joined the army as fast as I could. Besides, I'd heard about something being rosy and riveting. Really, it was more like I was going to stay rosy. And they were going to be trying to do the riveting. That's as before the Me Too. Don't get uptight, ladies. Yeah, I joined the Army in the 70s. And I knew instinctively I would be standing at attention a lot. But receiving it, I was, I guess I didn't do my homework. You know, and they put me straight into Germany, into a town where I was the only woman among two thousand men. Me, two thousand men. There's no punchline for that. I just can't quit bragging about it, you know. But I'm really bad at math and it's a good thing I joined the military for three years because it took three years for me to figure out how many times are they going to keep trying to put two thousand into one? Twenty-seven and I'm the remainder, and I'm still standing victorious. Yeah, I'm the remainder. I got a little bit of PTSD from it, from all the military sexual trauma and friendly fire. Don't bother me at all. I got a little PTSD and I'm winning at that too. Yeah, because I found out PTSD doesn't stand for post STD, so. Who's winning now? I am, that's who. I had a lieutenant in the army and he used to say all the time, they call me the 60 minute man. They call me the 60 minute man. Every time I'd walk in a room, only woman, that's what he'd say. 
I got so fed up with it one day, I spouted it off without even planning it. I said, what, to get it up? Yeah, so who's winning now, bitches? Yeah, but you know, being in the military was great, but people are so stupid. They asked the dumbest questions of females who served in the military during Vietnam. They asked them dumb questions. Like, did you get injured in Vietnam? How many times do I have to tell you I was in Germany? How do you get injured in Germany during Vietnam? Yeah, but I did almost get my legs blown off. There was bullets flying everywhere, which is weird in Germany during peace, peace time in Germany because it was the cashier next to me cleaning his weapon and it was loaded with bullets and he didn't know it. Yeah, talk about dodging bullets, literally. You know, I didn't get injured in the military, but boy, when I got back to America, did I get the big ka -ching. I got hit by a drunk driver in America after serving the, my country in Germany. Come back here, hit by a drunk driver. And I went to the VA and they're like, your brain injury isn't bad enough. You're gonna have to heal yourself. Okay, let me let that sink in for a second. The lady with the brain injury is going to heal herself. And this is the remainder of that. You're welcome. You know, that was so weird. You know what's weird is when the doctors find out that you forget about three things, oh, sorry. 3,000 things in a row, all of a sudden the doctors don't want you to carry a gun. I get it. I could go postal, right? That's how all this problem started by going postal to the, I haven't gone to the post office since I went in the military or since Clinton deleted her emails, whatever. Yeah, but uh, I gotta say, that, you know, like I love now making my life about making military and veterans laugh. Forget about it. It's the best joy in the world. You know, when I'm making those military vets, military and vets laugh and forget the bullshit our country made them do so that we could be speaking in English and not Deutsch, I get tingly all over my body tingly. You know, like J-Lo, body goosey tingly. And that's how I know I'm always gonna wanna go out and find another GI spot. Thank you for your service to me, guys. You're awesome, yeah. So in, in my closing, I just wanna say that I got my DNA packet back and it confirmed positive for real that Einstein is a relative of mine. He's in my family's history on my father's side. My father's mother is in his lineage. That happens to be our family's theory of relativity. So we're winning now, you know, and sure he could handle do solving physics problems on a blackboard, but he couldn't manage to figure out a hairbrush. Give me a break. Well, you know, that's about my time, and I'm Melinda Marcus-Smith. Thank you.